Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, good afternoon and good evening everybody. So, whenever you uh, listen to these lectures, so depending on that time, my greetings to you all. I am Raghunandan Sengupta from IIT Kanpur in the IME department. Uh, I am going to start the course in the area of project management. So, project management as a course is very vast. So, I will just very briefly first go through the, the books. The reason I am I want to first go through the books is that that will give you what type uh, of, of concepts I am going to follow. I will all obviously highlight which books are more specific to this course, which are a little bit more advanced so on and so forth and then basically go through the syllabus and discuss. And before I start, I am sure everybody has gone through the syllabus, everybody is aware. So, this would be about of 20 contact hours my lectures. Uh, over the videos in the NPTEL course. So, obviously, I will try to basically bring different types of problems also in between, but over and above that I will also refer to few of the problem sets which the students who are planning to take this course can definitely solve and get a good understanding of project management as such. So, the reference list which I which I, I am going to follow, which is basically a collection and collation of different type of uh, notes which I prepared, not, not uh, very, very uh, in depth in any field, but it basically covers in a general format. The main book which is very specific to the Indian audience is the first one which is by Prasanna Chandra, uh, published by Tata Macro Hill is basically known as projects. So, it covers all the topics related to project management, related to PERT, which is program evaluation review technique, CPM, which is critical path method. Then it has the concept of how you are trying to basically analyze a project from the internal rate of return, expected value, so on and so forth. So, it is based and it has a lot of problems which are solved and, and cases which gives a good preview about what concept of project management is. A very good book, but old book in the market is the second one which is by Levy and Weist. Basically, it is called the Management Guide to PERT and CPM. So, it is a little bit advanced book, but condenses all, all, uh, all the topics which generally are covered in project management. And uh, it does not obviously cover few of the topics which I am going to uh, discuss or talk within another few minutes. So, basically main focus is that apart from PERT and CPM, what is basically how you find out the, the time taking to finish a project, if you crash a, a project, what is the overall cost involved and what is the marginal rate of the cost for the projects and so on and so forth. So, the cost crunch can be from the point of view of, of money, can be from the point of view of resource constraints and so on and so forth. The third, fifth and the sixth book are in general in nature, if you see the, the slides, which is the third one is the Lewis one, uh, fifth one is the Morris and the sixth one is uh, the Philip one. I want to talk to you about this book which is Modern and Philip, which is a little bit old book as like in, in line with Levy and Waste, but it has got a, a, a very in-depth analysis from the mathematical point of view of the concept of project management and obviously it consists the concept of, of how precedence diagrams which we will come consider later on that how they are considered in details, how, how operation research optimization framework is used to analyze different type of, of problems and it covers in depth with respect to Levy and West. Another thing is that it has few problems which are solved, some, some uh, coding in the concept of SLAM. SLAM is basically a, a simulation package. Obviously, we would not use it here, but I just wanted to mention that. It cause, uh, has some uh, the codes in the SLAM concept, 
this uh, book which is the modern F. Philip one. And last but not least, if you see the uh, book which is the seventh in number by Pritzker, Alan Pritzker, it basically covers a whole different topic of Q jet, where precedence diagrams and all these concepts are there, but cyclicity comes into the picture such so that for any very big project you are able to analyze those projects from the point of view of Q jerk and try to solve them accordingly. So, obviously, our flow would be mainly from the basic topics, then go into the concept of precedence diagram in a more details and obviously, before that we will cover PERT CPM and then go into the Q jerk, but main focus would be the former part. Uh, what we will try to cover, obviously this slide does not have that, I will try to be very brief uh, considering that you have already seen the syllabus. It will basically cons consider what we mean by projects, how projects can basically be analyzed and what are the basic general characteristics of the projects. Then we will come to the concept of Gantt charts, how the bar charts are basically analyzed in order to understand the, the, the successor and, pre and prejudice. And the preceder uh, of, of the jobs. So, which jobs comes before, which jobs comes after and what are the relationship between the jobs and in the activities. Then we will consider the concept of activity on node and activity on R concepts. Activity means the task which you are going to do. So, obviously, there are different type of notions how you depict them pictorially. So, it can be either from the concept of arc or from the concept of nodes. Then we consider different different two main types of, of, of network concepts which are used in trying to basically analyze projects which is as I said in the beginning is the PERT and the CPM. What are the main difference of the PERT and CPM? I will consider that later on. Then how apart from deterministic time framework, how you consider the probabilistic time framework, the concept of, of most pessimistic time, most optimistic time the average median time, why median is taken and not mean, I will consider that also. Then we will consider what type of different type of distributions are considered in the, in the area of, of uh, networks or project management how and how it is relevant, how you try to find out the average time taken to finish a project, what is the slack, what are the dummy activities. So, we will consider all these things in details. Then we will slowly consider that what is the critical path or critical time taken to finish a project and how it has an effect on the overall resource constraints. Because we will consider till now till the fag end of the course that all the concept of basically trying to analyze a project considers that there is no resource constraint. That means either man or material or amount of money are not the important factor. What is important is the time. Now, the moment you basically overflow your time, these consequence of more resources being used, more manpower being used, more money being used obviously comes into the picture. And if you want to basically crash a job, crash means basically shorten the time duration of the job considering that it needs to be done much beforehand. So, how it basically affects your overall resource constraints will be considered. We will only solve these problems on a simplistic notion using the diagrams only, not go into the actual solution of the problem from the optimization point of view. Even though I will try to give you some flavor of how the uh, optimization problems are basically formulated in order to solve this type of problems. And then in the, in the fag end of the course, provided it is basically having, have a, having a sync with how we are proceeding. I will try to cover some concept or basic algorithms and, and ideas and rules of sequencing and scheduling, which may not have any direct um, uh, relationship with, with the project management, but it will give you some idea how concept of sequencing and scheduling are utilized when you have different types of jobs and different type of, of um, uh, machines. Machines means the entities which basically process the job. That can be a machine, that can be a tailor machine, that can be a, a outlet in the bank where you are basically delivering, giving your check and getting the money. So, how they should basically be managed in order to basically look into the factor that how the overall time or how the overall efficiency of the overall system can be increased. 
And, and to finish those quotes, apart from the problem solution which we will do, I will try to basically consider one or two very simple cases which are relevant from the point of view of project management, mainly from the point of view of per CPM and if time permits, I will definitely consider one to the maximum possible two cases in the area of QJOT, but that, that is depending on how we proceed. So, now coming to the basically coming to the general introduction. So, what do you mean by projects? So, for more most organization and societies you have some work to finish. Now, work need not be basically repetitive, it can be overall one's concept of work which has to be framed in such a way that the overall timing of the works are important, critical, critical I am using the word um, uh, for the first time not the critical path method, the critical word I am using which will be utilized later on also, such that you want to finish the work considering some project completion or framework of time and, and resource utilization is there in order to meet some, some deadline of some work. It can be either building a, a building, it can be either building say for example, finishing uh, the modeling of a car, it can be building of a bridge, it can be either the building up of a road, whatever it is. Now, to give a brief background, the concept of PERT and, and CPM and this, this precedence diagram concept basically came into the force or came into the, the ideas of, of how we can utilize that during the, the, the US space program of Apollo and so on and so forth, where the amount of work need to be done for one in one project. That means, there was only one project which has to be done and hence the concept of PERT and CPM came. So, if you basically read into the books, you will understand that the history of that how PERT, CPM and project management came. So, we will be talking about building the G, uh, latest G4 network the in the in, in G4 network in the sense like we will be considering that how that uh, the projects which you are going to implement which have some deadlines how they can be implemented. G4 networks for the smartphone designing a new composite material of a, say for example, a passenger aircraft or a car that is a project and we need to basically implement and try to basically utilize the concept of project management in order to finish that work within time considering the resources which are there. It can be also related to a planning a major fundraising event like say for example, some political campaign is going on or say for example, some eradication of leprosy dive is going on or say for example, you want to basically um, float a product in the market and there is a deadline that the marketing campaign should be over by that time. So, these can also be termed as a project. It can be either engineering and construction of an oil field. So, you have an have a basin that has to be the drilled and, and oil has to be tapped such that it, it within a certain time it has to be uh, pumped out and, and then sold in the market. So, obviously, that can also be considered as a, as a project with different type of, of uh, constraints and different type of uh, outputs which are of main consideration for the project manager or the person or the set of persons you are trying to analyze that project. It can be also related to de developing a high speed train. So, what are the requirements which are to be done? What is the time schedule? So, based on that you basically de design a project for that. The goal is basically to create in all these things which I mentioned, it can be is to create of something of value to address a business opportunity. It can be either from the social perspective, it can be from the business perspective and, and main end result is that it has to get some benefit. Benefit can be social, as I mentioned, it can be from the financial point of view also. So, thus projects resemble human accomplishment sometimes on a grand scale. Like say for example, if you consider the Hoover Dam project, so obviously that was also a project. If you consider the projects which, which ISRO is, is for the Mangalyan, for the, uh, the moon project, whatever it is, those are also projects which can be termed that where the concept of project management has been utilized in a big way. So, consider that you want to build the, you, there were some huge amount of tasks needed to be done in order to build the Bhakranagal Dam, obviously that was also a project on a big scale. And sometimes the projects need not be very big, they can be small, but they can be complicated in the sense that they can be loops, interloops and, and feedback loops as that the concept of PERT and CPM which I did mention in the beginning, 
do not consider the concept of looping being there. So, that means, these feedback loops are not there, which will be considered in the later part of the course when we consider the concept of QJ. So, we will we'll, with, with an introduction, we will consider all those, those later on also. So, different between production and projects. So, production is basically a continu continuation production of say for example, a similar type of cars which is being produced or similar type of machine tools which is being produced or similar type of cloth which is being produced in the garment uh, factory. So, obviously, that has some difference in, from the concept of a project. So, in what are those? I will just, just read it from the slides and then explain it as we proceed. In manufacturing theory, distinction is made between the engineering and the production. So, you have different type of engineering concept which are used and then they are basically being interpreted in the production uh, concept. Engineering comprises both product and production engineering. So, product can be basically trying to design the product, trying to find out what are the essential features, re-engineering and so on and so forth are considered when you are basically doing the product design as such in the under the ambit of engineering. So, these two cycles of basically product and production engineering are repeated for every new and updated product and basically depending on the specifications which are there in the market, you basically try to update that. Say for example, the fuel tank design has to be done again for one of the Bajaj motor, uh, motorcycles. So, it has to be done in such a way that it takes care of that or say for example, when you are trying to um, uh, stitch a shirt. Uh, by being done by or, or a jeans being being uh, manufactured by Arvind Mills, so obviously there are some design parameters which have to be taken into consider depending on the market trend and what the people want. So, obviously that would be taken into consideration and the new design features would be done. So, obviously that goes in the concept of production and product design rather than being a one and one only project which is on a standalone basis and which has to be done on a single framework only one time. The production can be repeated continuously, they can be in batches or they can be just once. So, this concept of once when you do that a big project which would not be repeated again, there we will try to basically bring the concept of project management. In production, if it is continuous, it is referred to the, the production line, whereas in operations are continuous, are repeated, would not be considered the concept of, of project management. So, you have only one flow, obviously feedback would be there as I mentioned, but this one flow is, is on, on a standalone basis considering that it will be only done once. So, hence the concept of project, project management would be coming into the picture. If production is only one piece, it is referred to as one of a kind production, thus the one of a kind production is actually only once when you do that as I mentioned a uh, few seconds back, is basically a project where the focus is on the unique product design which has been made and unique production concept which will be used in order to implement that. That can be, I am using the word uh, design and production from the production point of view, but it can be say for example, project can be implementation for marketing strategy, in, implementation say for example, of trying to basically come up with a new drug, which is one of, one of its kind only and how it would be marketed or say for example, you want to find out the efficacy of a, of a drug in the market and then basically plan your strategy accordingly, how things can be done. So, that is only one time, hence it will basically be termed as a project on a project management scale. So, where in the project, the focus is on the unique product made only once in contrast to the repeated manufacturing concept which is used for the same product time and again in the engineering concept. So, what we, what we see in this slide is basically a typical uh, production cycle. You have a product engineering. So, all the engineering concept has been used. The production concept will be used. Production concept is that means you are using a drill machine. It can be using a lathe machine. CNC machine, but they are being used in such a, in a way that the, the job repeatedly would be done time and again for the products which are coming such that they would basically feed into the uh, system line of production which are to be sold in the market, consumed or whatever it is. So, after the production engineering, the production starts and once the production starts, the repetition of the, of the same set of procedures which had already been, um, been fine tuned would be repeated time and again. So, hence any variations which are, which have already been considered in, in, in the concept of, of production engineering and the product engineering beforehand are already there such that there is no such concept of trying to change the overall, 
overall production process as you go in producing the, the, the material or the product. Projects operate outside the bounds of these and outside the bounds of the organization normal scheme of things. So, they are as I mentioned, they are only one effort at a time, they have to be done only once, but obviously there are different type of constraints which limits its efficacy such that you want to basically plan it in, in such a way that you get the maximum benefit. Benefit means that means time is a constraint, resources is a constraint, all these things have to be considered in the best possible way. So, they offer an exciting alternative that is project management to many of the repetitive ongoing systems within a firm. Thus, projects are different from, from other forms of organization processes and projects share the following characteristics which may not be intrinsic part of each and every project, but generally they have the characteristics of any project have these. They are complex and they are unique, unique means one at a time. So, once you finish the project that would not be repeated in future. Complex in means that there are different type of sequences of products which have with of, of a sequence of events have to be undertaken so that the overall completion of the project is accomplished. They have a very clear set of goals and clear set of, of, of um, um, a small set of accomplishments. Say for example, I am trying to build a, a, a stadium. So, obviously, it will be stated that I want to use that stadium for a certain football tournament which is going to come up in 2018. So, obviously, it would mean that my deadline of trying to finish up that project is fixed. Say for example, January 31st, 2018. Based on that, I try to find out that when should be the inauguration be done. And as I try to find out and go back, I try to find out one at a time when the foundation would be laid, when the overall field should be set up, how should the, the stadium be set up such that the chairs, the audio system, the security system as required should be set up such that they are unique in, in nature such that one at a time as they are completed, you basically are able to accomplish the whole project. So, obviously, there would be some precedence diagram. Say for example, without finishing the overall groundwork or laying the foundation of the overall stadium, I cannot complete the whole work. So, obviously, it means those some of the jobs or some of the activities are need, need to be done in such a way, there is a certain sequence of events which need to be accomplished in order to basically finish the overall project. They are limited by time, schedule and resources and, and, and budget. So, obviously, we will consider this, this point of budget scheduling and resources later on, but our main focus would be basically to consider the concept of time as the main constraint. So, our main constraint is that we will consider time as money and try to finish off any of the projects within a schedule time such that any change in the sequence of the events or say for example, trying to squeeze or crash up certain activity or trying to basically utilize your, your resources are done in such a way that your main concern which is the time depending on which you want to finish the project is taken into consideration with the primary goal. But it may so happen that in many of the projects apart from the time resources or the budgets are also important. So, in that case how you basically consider the concept of budgets and the concept of basically resources and they need to be brought into the picture after the time constraints are taken into consideration will also be considered. But obviously, in many of the cases, obviously not in the initial part, we will consider simple, very simple multi-objective programming where the resources along with the times are considered in such a way that the weightages are given on the concept of time, on the concept of resources and budget such that you are able to basically find a compromise as that it fulfills the criteria of the overall project in all the things which are which are important for you. So, it need not be only time is important, it need not be only resources are important. If both of them are important, you make a balance between them and try to basically finish your work accordingly. Projects are very customer focused, like customer in the in, in the example which I just mentioned few minutes back is basically the stadium is to be built. Why? Because a football tournament would be held and if the football tournament is held, your main focus are the customers which is basically the 
spectators who are going to come and watch it. It may be the society or say for example, you want to build a hospital and your main focus would be to meet the, the demand of the health care which the general public in a particular region has. Or say for example, you want to basically come up with a new drug consider in the area of malaria or say for example, in the area of HIV or say for example, in tuberculosis, you want to plan it in such a way that your main goal which is basically to meet the requirements of the customers which is the social, social structure as such or people who are suffering from such diseases are taken care accordingly. It can be say for example, if you want to have a uh, float um, a project related to basically trying to come into the market with a certain bike it may be that your main goal is basically to come up with a unique motorcycle or a bicycle such that it basically gives a competition to your customers because your main motive definitely can be to run your business in order to make profit. So, how you will basically try to optimize the project in such a way that it basically has the maximum benefit on, on your overall um, cash flows on, on overall of your profit motivation can definitely be a, a criteria based on which the project would be taken. So, in general to put, put use in a very qualitative framework without going to the concept of quantitative. So, obviously, we will we'll consider a quantitative concept later on. So, project management is basically the application of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques to project activities to meet a certain project requirement or criteria. So, what are the requirements, what are the criteria, we will consider that, but in general we we'll first try to basically analyze what is a project and what are the general concept based on which the project is built up and slowly consider what are the criteria based on which a project is evaluated. So, several techniques apply to project planning activities. So, say for example, the concept of scope management is there, concept of risk management is there. Risk, I want to pause here, it does not mean the concept of risk from the point of view of financial risk only. It can be from the point of view of what is the social impact of the, of the project. Does it have a risk? What is the overall impact of the environment? So, does it have a risk? Or say for example, what is effect of, of the, the, uh, the risk from the point of view of its implication on, on the, the company which is basically trying to come up with the project. If it is say for example, in my last example which I gave about trying to come up in the market with the new bike or a motorcycle, it may have a huge implication on the overall bottom line of the company. So, if the company is really banking on that product, so obviously your main thing is basically profit motive. So, any risk perspective for the company would be the financial implication it may face in case the project does not take off or does not pay the returns which it the company wants. So, we will also consider later on the detailed work breakdown structures, how the works or how the activities are broken down in components so that it gives you a, a good idea that what are the building blocks for the overall project. So, rather than concentrating on each and every activity at one go, it may be better that we consider different blocks of activities as that concentrating on the blocks would give, give us a much better macro view of how the project is done rather than in going to the micro details at one go immediately. Um, projects would definitely consider later on as I mentioned that time is important that is true, but cost perspective that how you can reduce the cost would also come into the picture. We will also consider the scheduling processes, how the uh, scheduling process of the activities are done and we will consider them in such a way that all the concept of precedence diagram, all the concept of relationship between activities, all the concept of which job should come before, which job should be coming later on on how they can be taken up simultaneously or they can be taken up at different points of time considering there is a time difference between two, two different activities or jobs would also be considered. Now, the reason why I mentioned the, the concept that how the time difference between two activities and jobs should be considered or, or ought to be considered is that we later see that the concept, the general concept of how to find out the slacks or how to find out the overall time duration of jobs are there we will have to basically have a look at different concept of how the precedence diagrams would be done. So, we will also consider the Gantt, the PERT charts and how the controlling of the projects are done 
and obviously we will consider that how the earned value of the of the um, project can be utilized that how do you basically find out the expected value of the project and try to compare different projects if the overall scheme of the project is basically the goal is same. So, if you want to compare that project 1 is better than project 2 or vice versa, we will take that. Taken together, however, there, so all this concept taken together presents a powerful suit or a, or a set of tools based on which we will basically consider project management as a such, such that over and above of the quantity techniques, we will consider the quality feel of that also. So, with this I will end the first uh, lecture and then uh, as we start with the second lecture, we will see that how we are going to expand this concept in the later classes. Thank you. Thank you.